Hello everyone. Um, today we are doing a soil analysis lab with myself, Ms. Jennifer, and Sunita. Um, we're going to be exploring different soil types. As we've talked about in class, there's over 20,000 different soils. Agronomy is one of the oldest um, sciences studying soil and it benefits us because we like to eat food and how we get our food and the nutrients is actually from healthy good soil. So soil is important even though it's often called dirt, it's actually more complex than just that. So today we're going to do a soil analysis and we went over our handout looking at different soil horizons and what makes up the soil. Um, soil is living, it's composed of organic matter, um, it's also composed of minerals and particles um, eroded away by water and wind of rock material and other debris. Um, we also have pore space that helps create airflow and water flow so that it can reach to the roots. So we'll be looking at a couple of those complexities of studying their chemistry of the soil as well as their physical properties. All right, so we're gonna jump right into some of the chemical experiment of the soil type and analysis and doing it with the pH. All right, so we have a pH meter strip and the pH measures the hydrogen ions. Basically, it's a negative log rhythm of the hydrogen ions. So this is the pH meter, um, which is a measurement of hydrogen ions and it's a logarithm of negative hydrogen ions um, and so we are using a pH strip to look at the color code to identify the pH of our soil analysis. Um, sometimes people use actually a pH meter which gives you a number system value but right now we're just having an indicator strip to tell us with the color coding. So we are going to do the test. We took um, deionized or distilled water we put 30 milliliters of this. The reason why we used distilled water is because it's a pH of seven, which means it's neutral. Um, we put the soil in it to basically separate and get into the water, saturate. And what we're going to do is take a pH strip as so and dip it into the water for about a couple seconds. And then you just come back and you kind of look at it, right, to show the color of the pH strip and what it matches. And typically your pH of your soil with the water should be around, you know, six, seven. Ours is about seven, all right? So that's a, a good, good pH. Um, a lot of plants do good with about a pH of seven, but some plants like blueberries, like uh, more acidic, right? So they have a lower pH on the spectrum, um, where other plants like a higher pH or more alkaline or more basic, right? So it's really important to understand the pH of your soil to know what type of crops you should grow, All right? The next chemistry experiment we're going to go to and jump ahead is our macronutrients where again, we basically extracted using flock tablets. We put, again, 30 milliliters of distilled water with our soil, and we basically extracted the nutrients from the soil. And we're gonna perform three different tests. Um, in each of these tests, we use different tablets to extract some of the macronutrients, such as nitrogen is one important macronutrient is really essential for plant growth and amino acids and development. We also have phosphorus. Phosphorus is another important element that is needed for plant growth, especially in root protection and development of flowers and fruits. Um, and then lastly, our other important macronutrient is potassium. Again, it's really essential for absorbing minerals and nutrients, and again, root growth and stability. And so we looked at these three important macronutrients and wish you were here, because this is a lot of fun to do. You extract it and you have an interpretation of a color as an indicator of these three essential macronutrients. Um, and oftentimes you will go into the store and you'll see different combinations of these macronutrients because different plants require different concentrations, 
right? Mm -hmm. So they sometimes require 30, 20, 10, or 10, 10, 10, and it all depends on the type of plant that you're growing. Um, there's also micronutrients that are essential for plant growth, but we're only looking at the macronutrients. Harder to test. Yeah. So here we did, we, we yeah. So we did a test of looking at nitrogen, right? And nitrogen, we found it to be on the low medium side, right? Of looking at the color indicator from the plant um, of the soil extraction. And um, as you can see, it's like this light pinkish color. Um, you know, that's not necessarily good or bad. It just depends on what type of plant you're trying to grow and how you might want to amend the soil to increase the nitrogen. There's a lot of different ways by adding compost or earthworms. Or another way is nitrogen fixing bacteria by planting clover or alfalfa or any other type of legumes like fava beans and amending it back in the soil. Another good in way to increase nitrogen into the soil is chicken manure at specific quantities because you don't want to over excess nitrogen into the soil because it could burn the plants. The next one we did was the phosphorus test. And we basically, again, extracted phosphorus from the soil. Um, and we, again, used a color indicator to basically look at our content of the phosphorus in the soil. Um, phosphorus is usually amended by rock material and eroded material from that rock gets into our soil concentration. Um, but we can add a lot of supplements to increase our phosphorus by um, adding bone meal into our soil, which is another good supplement to increase the phosphorus. And as you can see, we have a you know, deep, rich blue, which I would say it's on the medium to high, right? So it's a really vibrant blue. And again, it's depending on what type of crop you're growing, um, if you have to decrease or increase your phosphorus content. The last test we did was the potassium, right? So the potassium is our third macronutrient in which we looked at it. And this one is a little bit difficult to tell. Um, you say on the high scale, right? So we have basically it showing at the high scale of this because it's not as vibrant of a black gray, but you can go either or. Um, it's on the lighter shade of that coloring. Um, and potassium is, again, another macronutrient that is needed for plant growth. And again, you can add it by increasing supplements into your soil and such as well, or decreasing it. Yeah, kelp. Um, yeah, kelp meal and other plants of decayed material can help increase that potassium concentration as well. Um, so those are our three macronutrients that we look for in our soil type, and we're going to stop for a second so we can set up for some physical properties of soil.